Okay, we're going to have a look at um, writing or creating a cumulative frequency uh, chart, which is a really useful um, chart to place in your financial report when you do your assessment. Um, it shows the spread of the data nicely. It can show you where the median is, um, different percentiles and interquartile range, etc. Okay, so it's a really nice visual way to represent um, house prices. Um, when you do your assessment as well, it doesn't have to be cost of house prices, it could be any numerical value that you're trying to use from a big um, list of data, it could be rental prices, etc. It all works the same really. Okay, but when you come to do this tutorial, this will be set up for you like this. Already I've, I've extracted the maximum number from here, the highest house price using the max formula, and the minimum, the smallest one there. Okay. I think I've also sorted them in, in price order, it's just a little bit easier to see and check that we're working right. I decided that based on these prices that I've got, that I'm going to have groups of 100,000, starting at naught and going up 100,000, so um, 100 to 900,000 there. And the cumulative frequency means that all, all this means is that the when we write the formulas now, it's going to look and see how many houses fall with an upper price um, amount of 100,000. So I could go over here and I'd look, well, there's only one. So one would go in there, okay, if we were to do it manually. And then cumulatively, okay, how many from the start will go up to 200,000? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six there already. So we've got six. And then we'd look for um, uh, th up to 300,000. So now we're here, so seven, eight, nine, ten. And then that would be. 10 okay but we're not going to type those over and gain some extra marks by writing formulas okay the formula we need to use is something called count ifs okay so click in the first cell here and um, count function there and we've got count ifs so the first thing you only need these two boxes okay another box will pop up after we've added the, the first criteria range but we don't need that for this particular example so you can ignore that if it does pop up uh, first thing is we need the range, and the criteria range is, is, is our numbers, is our house prices. So we can just highlight those down there, like that. Now, because we want to do a fill down, a copy down, we need to lock these in as absolute references. So highlight the cells here. Okay, so this is a neat workaround. Push, push F4 on your keyboard, okay, and it puts the dollar signs around for you, and those are locked in. Now we need to do, so what it's going to do is we need to lock in that cell range and count all the values that are less than or equals to the upper range okay because we're going to include the upper range in in this in our particular um, uh, section here so we write less than equals to there okay so it does that notice how it pops these other ones up like I said it would okay and we need to use the ampersand, which is above 7, and this cell here. It just basically puts together less than or equals to D8. It, it works that out. So at the moment, when it's looking, it's going to say, find all the numbers for this cell in this range that are less than or equal to 100,000. See, it evaluating what we're doing here, less than or equal to D8. Okay, so that's the, what they call the syntax of the program code for it. looks like it's working. Fingers crossed, click OK. And we can double click on the corner there and it should fill down. And if you notice, there are 40 sets of data over here and the cumulative frequency should always add up to those 40. So what we're saying is there are one house um, with an upper limit of 100,000, six houses like we calculated before, an upper limit of, here they are, look, with an upper limit of um, 200,000 and so on. Okay, so we've got that there. Now I'm going to work out the percentage okay, uh, of that. Remember, we've got 40 houses, so it's just basically equals that. I mean, you could do 40 if you wanted to. So that divided by 40. The bottom one's always going to be the same, so we could click on that one. Remember, because if we fill down, we don't want it to change to E17 as we fill down, because that's what it will. So I'm going to highlight in that, and I'm going to lock it in with an F4. So that form is now locked in. I've already pre-formatted this as percentage to two decimal places. So up on here, I have highlighted that down for you. But just so you can see, you've got percentage there, and you've got these numbers here where you can 
change to um, extra decimal points. So I've got that to two. Similar again. Now, if you've got that correct up in here, because you locked it in, we can double click and we've got that over here. Okay. So now we've got this data. We can we can use it to create the chart. The only thing that's missing is when we make a cumulative frequency chart, we need to start with zero. So I've already made this over here, x axis, y axis. Okay. Upper limit is naught. So I just want to copy those into there. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I can just reference them. I mean, I could copy and paste, but equals that there, D8. Just reference it across, and I can drag down until I get to the values that I want. All the way down to 900,000. Same in here. So what we got equals over there, that one, F8. No need to lock those in. We can drag them down. Okay, so I've, I, it's not great. This. 3% there, slightly different, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to two decimal places on on that there. I mean, you can you can make it consistent if you want to. Um, it's, it's up to you, you know, little bits with rounding and stuff doesn't matter, it'll all add up to 100 in the end, okay, the way it will, the way it would go through with this. Now, so, there you go, we've got the calculations, we've taken our data set, we've managed to work out the cumulative frequency with this count diffs formula. Um, based on the um, groupings that we created here, the upper limit is an increment of 100,000. You can, when you do your own work, you can change. It depends on these values here. You want to make it nice, consistent. You know, something like you know nine or ten different um, groupings. Okay, is 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 roughly what you perhaps you should be aiming at. But you could make it less. If I'd made that 200,000, well, we'd have half the amount. But you can increment these. You know, these differences as you see fit. Okay, so I'm going to make this chart now. I'm going to highlight this with my um, with those headings on there. And we're going to go to insert. And what we create for a cumulative frequency is a chatter, a chatter, sorry, a scatter diagram. Okay, insert scatter. So if we go over here, we've got this little drop down menu here. That's the one we want there. Okay, we don't want that. Uh, you know, it, it, but that could work as well because it's just a curvy line, but these ones here with a plotted line are fine, okay? So I'm going to click on that. And you can see now we've got a cumulative frequency chart there. Um, stuff that we can do to it, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. You can note this down here, we've got a little bit of an issue with the, num the numbers. I mean, we've got these, this extra number on the end here, the, the two digits. If you click on the double click on the labels, you always get these options coming up. Or you can right click and format. Um, and you've got your got your units and all these kinds of things here. If you click on um, that there, if it's not already on it, and you go down, you've got numbers. And it's probably saying currency to two decimal places. So I'm going to change that to naught on there. So that just makes that, that's just a little bit neater now. Um, there, you know, we've got your text options, text outline. We've got our different thing, bits and bobs you can do to it. Don't, you're going to try to make it look professional, okay? Don't make it look, um, you know, that, but you can, you can, you know, you can change the color, etc. You can bold outline. All these things you can, you can experiment with yourself, and if you don't like it, you can click um, undo over here. If you notice, it goes to 120% there, so I don't want it to go, I'm going to double, I'm going over to there, and I'm going to access options again on this one, and you can see it says maximum 1.2. 120%, so we could change that to just to one there, and I'll reset to that. Um, other little bits and bobs you can do. Um, if you go to your chart options, now chart elements is slightly different on 2010, you'll find it up in the ribbon, okay? Have a look for it, but on the newer ones, you can click on, on here and add different things. So I'm gonna pop the data labels on there, Okay, gives a nice thing. Now that would mean if I've got that, I could get rid of this. Actually, it's not the case that you have to do it this way. You can. Um, so we've got percentage cumulative frequency over here. And what was it? For house prices in Manchester. So good tight titles are important. Because otherwise we don't know what we're looking at. Okay, I'm just going to shift that over slightly. To there, so it's out of the way of my data labels. Um, I want to add some access titles. I don't want one on the side here, so I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to just put um, a 
title for this in here. So we've got house price in sterling, pounds, like that. And we've got really neat um, uh, way of looking at this this particular one now on on there. And we can see where our, you know, where, you know, 90% of our houses go up to there. So there's a little bit of a tail off at the end here. Okay, and the low end. So the vast majority of our houses are sort of between, you know, 25 to 77.5% between 300 and 500,000. Okay. So that's your cumulative frequency um, chart.